Welcome back to this week's episode of MIAA 360. Broadcasting live inside of the MIAA Network Studio, I'm Ben Ferris. In today's show, we're going to take a look behind the scenes of how the MIAA Basketball Championship Tournament is produced and streamed live to our viewers. We're going to hear from faculty, staff, and students about how they produce it and how this opportunity impacts them. It's been a fantastic opportunity, a learning opportunity for many of us. I remember as a freshman coming in and calling games and being able to direct and run a replay, and that experience is invaluable. You compare that to some of the larger broadcasting schools in the country, as Syracuse, Northwestern, Ball State. They typically have to wait until their sophomores, juniors, seniors, until they even look at a camera. So to be able to be a part of a Division II conference that enables its students to broadcast a conference championship, that's huge. There's no other organization in the country that does this, that allows students from the conference to come and like produce the show, like entirely, like no help from the outside, like entirely students producing it. These students really gain a lot of first-hand experience in the broadcasting world and that to me is greater than any classroom experience that they could ever, ever hope for. Everything that they learn in the classroom being put into application here is just phenomenal. It's a great experience. I'm so glad that we get this opportunity to do it. I think it's just a learning opportunity beyond what they learn in the classroom, beyond what they learn on their campuses, um, but also being able to take the real world application and really see what it looks like in the real world. Because you can only say, this is what it's like so many times, but when you drop them into an environment like this, uh, they really get to see how it works and it will help prepare them for um, a career in the broadcast world going forward. This is my, I think it's my 15th year here at the MIAA basketball tournament. Um, I missed the first year because I was working on my PhD at the University of Missouri. And the next year I brought my students from Pittsburgh State up here to cover Pittsburgh State games. So we just covered the men and women's Pittsburgh State games. And then once they were out of the tournament, we went home. Um, we did that for two or three years. And while I was here, I noticed that there was there were video boards that weren't being used uh, here in Municipal. So I talked to the commissioner, who was then Ralph McFillin, um, about possibly doing the video boards here uh, for the tournament. And at first there was some, some skepticism in terms of if we could handle it, if we could do it. Um, I finally convinced them that I think, you know, I think we'd do a good job. They took a chance on us. Um, at that point, they were standard definition video boards. We didn't have any sort of computer equipment. It was basically just show the game, Really what I was worried about was showing replays. So the main thing that I was concerned about was replays at that point. Um, over the years, technology has gotten better. Things have gotten better. We've gone to high definition boards here at Municipal. Um, and I realized because we were getting so big, I needed some help. <clears throat> and um, I was fortunate that there was a professor at Fort Hayes who wanted to come on board and help us out a little bit one year. Um, so we kind of got the position where they would kind of cover pre-game show, halftime show for the internet streams, and then also cover the post-game press conferences. And so it, it made the internet stream a lot better. We could tighten it up a little bit with some pre-game shows, halftime shows, things like that, show some highlights of the game, talk about the game, wrap up the game, that kind of stuff. Um, as we grew, we realized we were doing a lot of stuff to every year we were adding new things, and we kind of wanted to do some packages for the fans uh, before the game starts, so you show some highlights of you know the how they got here type thing. Um, we realized that we were too busy with the production itself, running the video board, running the internet stream. So we asked uh, UCM to come along, and they have been kind enough to kind of come in and kind of help us with some packages. They've got an editing bay that they set up downstairs, so anytime we need stuff edited, they can do that as well. And um, so now we're. Last year was the first time that we actually went live to a regional audience. Uh, Spectrum Sports out of Kansas City picked us up and we actually did a pretty good job. I was, I was a nervous wreck. I wanted to prove that we could do this. Uh, it was one of those things again where I had to prove myself and prove that Fort Hayes, three universities, Fort Hayes, UCM and Pittsburgh State could work together and pull off a massive production like this. And it's really cool because it's all student produced. Um, they're getting a lot of instruction, especially on Thursday and Friday, of how it works, how, how things operate. All three of us have different ways of doing things. 
So we wanted to make sure that they understood our equipment, we understood their equipment, and then we rotate. That's a big thing for me, is to make sure that the students rotate through the positions. And we're, it's not a situation where the director directs every game. If it was, we would probably really be good by now. <laughs> Um, but we actually let the students experience directing, experience being on camera, uh, running a camera, replay, graphics, a lot of different positions. They rotate through and they get a lot of experience while they're up here. Mm -hmm. And then, so why don't you walk me through uh, your portion of the production here? Mm -hmm. um, in terms of my, my portion, I'm kind of, I've done this now for, for like I said, 14, 15 years, something like that, operating the video board. So I kind of have an idea of what the MIAA wants on the video board and how we handle that situation. Um, so I kind of serve as what I call the executive producer overall, um, but more, more so for the live production once the, the video board and then also the live production of the actual games. Um, I think Fort Hayes kind of handles kind of their executive produ production of the pregame shows, the halftime shows, and the postgame shows. Um, but all three of us, and then UCM, of course, handles all the production for anything that needs to be edited or, you know, if we do packages. So all three of us had to meet uh, very early in this process. Um, usually we have meetings in early January um, to start talking about you know, getting on the same page in terms of what they're going to do, what we're going to do, what do they need to produce, what we need, we what do we need to produce in order to pull this whole thing off? Uh, who's doing what graphics? Who's doing what packages for the for the productions? And um, and then we all just kind of come together on during the tournament and work hard. And then can you kind of run through uh, each position for each or each? position the students hold, uh, you know, downstairs in the, in the control room, on the cameras, everything like that? Yeah. There's a lot of different positions. It takes a lot of people to pull this off. Um, generally, during the live production downsta downstairs, uh, during the game, basically, um, we have five camera operators running, uh, three up top, and then we have two on the, on the sidelines. Uh, we also have a couple of GoPros on the, on the backboards that we can get. So, we have a total of seven cameras in operation. Um, the other thing that we have to worry about during the production is referee replay monitor as well. So we have seven cameras for the referees to look at as well. But the, so that means a replay operator, a student replay operator, will be sitting there talking to the referee the entire time as well, which is another position. Um, we also have a technical director, a director, two graphic operators, one of them operating a score bug for the viewers that watching the internet to be able to see another one operating just basic graphics that we can put up at any time um, and then of course the video board operator as well which is another position currently being done by a student while I'm up here at, in this interview as a matter of fact uh, a lot of times I'll sit in that position just to make sure everything goes on well on the video board um, because we don't want to screw anything up live in the in venue while it happens as well um, and then we have uh, a producer generally, that's a student producer that kind of oversees everybody as they're working and, and watches over everything. Mm -hmm. And so how many, how many students do you, do you think are actually here? Or do you have an exact number? Um, I don't exactly know, but there's probably about 32 students total. Um, I know whenever we first talked, there was a, everybody kind of gave me an estimate of how many students they were bringing. Uh, and it was anywhere between 11 to 13 students from all three schools. So. You know, there could be 12 students from each school here, which would be about 30, if I do my math right, 36 students, 30, or 36 students, mm -hmm. yeah, 36. And then what do you, what do you think these students are getting out of uh, producing this event? Oh, this, this is real world experience. And I think I've, I've already, I could really tell this year that a lot of students didn't really understand the deadline aspect of it. Um, it is a fun event. We're here for a weekend. We get tired. Um, we're working 13 hour days. So the students will get home, or back to the hotel, not really home, but back to the hotel, about 11 o'clock at night, and we ask them to get up and be ready to go for production about nine o'clock in the morning. Um, some of them are not morning people, and some of them do not go to bed at 11 o'clock at night, I'm sure, on Friday and Saturday nights. So they, they're dragging in here, and um, I've really got to preach to them that we have a deadline, the game starts at noon or at one o'clock or whatever the case may be, and they've got to be ready for their production. So they're really learning that idea of deadlines. Um, 
you know, some of them want to be perfectionists and they want their, their open video, for instance, to look really, really good. And I want it to look really, really good too. But, you know, they have to have it to me at a certain time or I can't air it before the game starts. So they're learning that aspect of it as well. Um, and then they're also learning live event production. There's a difference between live in venue production doing the video board and then what we're sending out to people viewing the internet stream and they're getting that understanding. And that's why the video, the video production person in that position will separate that broadcast off um, from our production and we kind of have two separate productions running at once. I know at the end of the night you guys uh, huddle up and, and you know, kind of go through what you guys did great today and what you need to work on. Can you kind of tell me the purpose of that? <laughs> Yeah, that was actually that was actually kind of a fun thing that was started by a student of ours where he just, one time he just got really pumped up about a production and he goes, uh, and, and started running around shaking hands with everybody, clapping hands. Then he got out in the middle and he was dancing. And at Pittsburgh State, we just kind of started that tradition. And um, he was still a student here whenever all three schools kind of combined. And we kept that tradition going here at the MIAA tournament. And it's just a way for us to come together and say, hey, great production, guys. Great way to end the day. Um, I can give them any last minute pointers in terms of what I saw throughout the day that they can work on for the next day to be better. Um, and you know, hopefully by Sunday it's a celebration of some great productions that we've done here at the MIAA tournament. And then what do you get out of the, uh, the tournament? For me it's really the teaching aspect. I'm a teacher I, I'm, and, and also um, I like sports which is good so I you know what what a great job I get to sit up here and watch 14 basketball games um, a lot of people can't say they love their job but I think I, I do love that aspect of live production um, at Pittsburgh State I do teach other classes having my PhD I teach a lot of graduate level classes and research classes as well so being able to teach a live event production class really gets me going and um, to, to see the students learn to see the students grow I've, I've now have students um, working at the NFL Network, I've got students working at ESPN, I've got students working, I had one student that just got back from the Olympics um, working for NBC Sports and that kind of thing is, it's like a proud father moment to know that they went from working at the MIAA basketball tournament or working at Pittsburgh State or Fort Hayes or UCM and taking that to the next level and, and being on national broadcasts. Um, it's like a proud father. I recently heard that you, you got a position at the NFL Network, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, and so why don't you tell me a little bit about um, maybe something that uh, you wish to do in the future that you're, you're hoping to kind of break into? Yeah, my aspirations are to eventually become a play-by-play -play announcer, maybe for a larger broadcast network, a la ESPN, Fox. But the NFL Network is a fantastic opportunity. One, my foot's in the door, and two, I'm able to see the holistic side of broadcasting, able to see the production side, the editing side, and I think in turn it will really help my overall development. And uh, our professor, Dr. Troy Como, preaches that we're versatile, that we're diverse, that we're not only announcers, we're not only camera operators, but we can work software and other hardware. So being able to go to the NFL Network is a spectacular opportunity and being able to enhance several of those fields that maybe I'm not as strong and it'll be a great time. Hmm. Now, you're going to be calling both games today, is that correct? Yep. Yeah, so why don't you kind of tell me what you know is going through your head when, when you're getting ready for, uh, for a, a game? Uh, I would say initially my sophomore, junior year, I would be extremely nervous around about this time, but I've had a, uh, enough games underneath my belt that it's not as nerve-wracking. But I would say I'm thinking about storylines and narratives from each team. I'm looking at player comfort. Uh, comparisons between two different guys. I'm in, in addition, looking at maybe some backstories for some key players, making sure that their statistics and their pronunciations are correct. In addition, I'm just trying to find a lot of interesting tidbits and stories and making sure I coordinate and relay that to my other color commentators or my other play-by-play -play guys. So being able to uh, have all, everything set up and ready to roll is pretty much what I'm focused on. Can you tell me a little bit about the equipment you guys use up there? Yeah, we use just your typical Sennheiser headset. We have an old video or audio board and just, I think, an Asus monitor that we have an HDMI plugged into. It's nothing fancy, and a lot of the universities, I would say, within the MIAA, we have some pretty advanced equipment. I know we were recently given a mini TriCaster, which is what we've been using for our mobile productions. In addition, we have the TriCaster Advanced Software, which allows us to hook up in inputs through our switcher and whatnot through a wireless signal. So we have some pretty advanced technology and we're hoping to continue to grow.
Mm-hmm. And now up uh, up where you guys are calling the game, do you guys have a separate monitor that you're looking at, or are you just watching the game um, as is? What we have is a monitor that sends, or rather is receiving a feed from downstairs, and mm-hmm. that's our production feed, what we call our dirty feed. So we're able to see everything that is going out over the air and over our stream. So being able to see the graphics and the score bug really helped us and it adds depth to our production. And at times it's difficult because we do want to have fun and watch the game and just be kids up there in the crow's nest enjoying an old fashioned game of basketball. But at times we have to look towards the monitor and divide our attention. So there's always that contrast between the two. My name is Russell Heitman and I'm with Fort Hayes State University and I'm the news and sports director of Tiger Media Network at Fort Hayes State University, which is the student media organization at FHSU. Perfect. And then why don't you walk me through your portion of the production? Okay. Uh, At Fort Hayes State, uh, here at the MIAA tournament, we primarily handle the pre, post, and halftime shows, so as well as the post-game press conferences. So we're in charge of creating the studio for our in-house hosts to do a pre-game show as well as the halftime and post-game, like I mentioned, uh, as well as cutting together replays, production elements to really set the stage for what the game is going to be before we kick it down to the post-game or the courtside commentators. Uh, so we're talking about stats, we're throwing replays of the previous games, uh, and like I said, just setting the stage. And it's it's a lot of fun. We also send a lot of students to kind of cross work with uh, Pittsburgh State for their live crews as well, and they do the same for us, but the primary responsibility for Fort Hayes is doing the pre, post, and half shows as well as live streaming the post-game press conferences. And then why don't you tell me a little bit about some of the equipment that you guys bring up? Okay. Uh, We bring our four JVC cameras as well as a Sony camera for gathering B-roll, a couple of um, DSLRs for shooting images and shooting B-roll as well. Uh, But our, our primary function we bring our TriCaster 460 as well as our uh, three play system which is what we ingest all of Pittsburgh State's cameras into and lets us cut together our own little three play replay highlight shows that we play during those pre post and halftime uh, and then we feed that all into our TriCaster and put together a virtual set uh, that makes us look like we're not sitting in a back closet of municipal auditorium but instead it makes us look like we're in a nice fancy LA studio um, but it helps put the, the talent in a nice position um, so we've got our green screen, our psych lights, our key lights, um, so a lot of lighting gear um, to really kind of boost that virtual set that we put them in. Um, but then we run everything back through, like I said, our TriCaster. We gather the, the three-play clips from Pittsburgh State's cameras, and then we're able to send our feed via our TriCaster downstairs to them, and they're able to put that up on the stream. Why is the lighting so important to the green screen in that aspect of the studio? Well, the green screen, if you don't have it lit up correctly, especially with a backlight on, the, on your talent, um, you actually have green up around the hair right here, and that'll actually start to key out, or you'll do the, the talent will actually look green uh, within your set. So it's really important to have your lighting correct, otherwise it's just going to look weird. And so what are your positions that the students do up here? The positions are um, a three-play operator, we take some of our own replay clips from each game so we can actually talk about those um, from a talent standpoint so they can actually refer back to those and we can show those uh, within our production. We have um, the uh, tech director, which operates the actual video switcher that we have up there with us. Um, and then we have a director that's pretty much telling the tech director what buttons to push and also giving the talent cues when to come in and then how, when to wrap it up and, or to stretch the, the production. All right, so let's uh, go into what you guys are doing today. So what, uh, Gabe, what's your specific position today? Um, today I'm actually gonna be on floor camera for both games, um, camera four, um, which is on the home side um, for the first game and camera five on the visitor side um, for the second game, so. Um, So yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing today. Um, And then just as well, what I like to do on um, game days as well is I I get the cameras set up, all five cameras, um, cameras set up, um, get them all white balanced, get them all all looking the same. Um, And then we roll on from there, get on the camera and do whatever the director tells me to do. Can you tell me a little bit about the the camera that you're going to be operating? So yeah, so the camera I'm running today um, is going to be one of our JVCs that we actually have. Um, with the school. Um, I'm not exactly sure of the series it is, but it is a JVC. 
um, and we actually run um, four and five, they are wireless. Um, so they actually run um, what we call our microwaves. They have a, um, a receiver up top that is um, that has the option to have 12 different channels. Um, and it transmits, it, 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 our receives. cameras, are, yeah, are, it receives. So our cameras have the transmitter on the back of them. The transmit a signal to the receiver um, so we can actually receive footage um, down to the production room. So the, the receiver actually has a hardline SDI all the way back to our control room um, that, that transfers that data and, and transfers our signal back there. Um, so it's actually a pretty cool system. Um, we're really lucky to have something like that to where we don't have to have cable runners downstairs or down with us mm -hmm. um, running cable, wrapping cable up. I mean, it's wireless. I mean, um, and it, it's just, it benefits us in every way. Um, I would say, I guess, if we wanted to, I'd say the only limitation is um, it does have more of a direct signal. So if you get out, if you start walking around too much and get outside of that signal range, it has a pretty good signal range, but if you get outside of that signal range, it does get a little, yeah. it gets what we call hits, where it's, it's kind of, you know, it hits a little bit. It, it kind of goes in and out in a sense. It's the easiest way to explain it. Um, but besides that, I mean, it, it works really great, and we've used it all year um, with our cameras back at Fort Hay State. So it's worked really well. And then what's what's the, the role of that camera? Okay, so right. So the role of that camera, um, we we do what we – we try to get a closer shot of, of people. I guess the best way to, to, to explain it would be it, it – it's a tight shot. Um, I like to have it on, on like your offense and your defense, and they mostly just follow the ball. You you know if a pass is there, you you turn your camera here, you go, you follow the ball. The shot goes up, you're following it into the hoop, um, and then after that shot is taken, um, if they make the shot, you zoom in on that person that made the shot. It's called a hero shot, um, and that way you can get the shot of who made the bucket. You know you get um, that way. You can also get. Um, during dead time, during like your media timeouts, during timeouts, um, that camera is also used um, to get crowd shots, um, any kind of kiss cam, any kind of fun little cams or camera um, guys that we do, um, any kind of media stuff that we have to do. Um, that That's good shots there as well as coach shots during the game as well. So you get all sorts of different shots that way. Um, and it's, it's, it's really nice to have something down there like that. Um, to get those close shots. So that's mostly the roles for that camera there. Okay. And then Jake, why don't you tell me about your position? Um, today I'm going to be, like as I already said, a producer. And I will also be taking the role of director in our control room up here. Um, as a producer, like I already said, like it's mainly making sure everything goes as smoothly as possible. Um, for example, if something goes down unexpectedly, you have to find a way to still make the production work. Even without that equipment, uh, yesterday we had a replay machine die on us out of nowhere. So it was a matter of figuring out, like, how do we use the other school's replay machine while we're doing our halftime shows, our pregame shows, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, we made it work. Like, we, we just worked through the pain. Like, it's the best way to describe it. Uh, you, you can't make something work that's broken, and you have to find ways around the technical difficulties. Um, and then as far as my directing position, it's, you know, making sure talent is aware of what's going to be happening, um, making sure all the other positions are set, ready to go, and then just from our control room, it's pretty simple in our control room. Downstairs with Pitt, it's highly different. It's calling shots during the game. For us, it's just being in communication with Pitt, making sure we're coming in and out of breaks correctly making sure um, all our graphics are running exactly when they should be. And that's about, that's about it for us up here. Mm -hmm. And so what do you think that, you know, you as students and, and all the other students are kind of getting out of this production? Oh, wow. Um, I think we've done this two years now. Mm -hmm. It's our second year mm -hmm. in Buffalo. Yeah, uh... um, I know for Pitt and UCM, they have some people who are here four years in a row. But, like, I mean, this is experience you can't beat. Like, especially today, we're going to be aired on live TV. It's something that we don't get that opportunity, especially students, to do. And like we were told yesterday and many times before, like, there's no other organization in the country that does this, that allows 
students from the conference to come and like produce the show like entirely like no help from the outside like entirely students producing it and for Spectrum Sports and Cox Communications to see how well we've been doing and trust us to put that over the air. It, it obviously gives you a feeling of accomplishment knowing that your work is like good enough to be aired on live TV and that you're highly trusted. It's actually quite funny. Um, so he mentioned um, we've been together two years at Fort Hayes State, um, but those two years prior to that, we were actually at um, junior colleges. Um, in fact, matter of fact, rival um, mm -hmm. community colleges, which if you know anything about Hutchinson, um, you're pretty much hated by everybody, especially mm -hmm. Butler. Um, but, you know, um, the funny thing is, is we had great media sources down there, mm -hmm. um, especially that started me off. But, but coming to Fort Hay State, where they, I mean, they, the, the big thing they sold me on to, they, they literally remodify like they they had a big upgrade before we got there like uh, a big um a fund like just big funds coming in um and i think that's that's what really benefits us is we have a lot of equipment and we have people willing to spend the money on us mm -hmm. um and seeing the stuff that we can produce um at least on the sports side that are willing to get us equipment willing to get us um different things that we need um, as we all know, um, at least on the production side, production equipment is very expensive. Um, so you do need help from the outside, help from um, people that are willing to fund you. Um, so it's really nice at Fort Hayes that we have people um, that are willing to fund us and get that equipment. And I think it benefits us a ton. Um, and I mean, it benefits us a lot um, in helping us, you know, make these great productions. Um, and it helps pull people in and showing them, hey, this is... This is what we have to offer. Well, that's our show for this week. From everybody here at the MIAA Network Studio, thanks for watching. I'm Ben Ferris, and until next week, bring your A-game.